but first, J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon sitting down with Maria Bartiromo to discuss a wide range of issues, including tax reform, rolling back regulation, and the bank investments technology. Maria also asking Dimon about his latest thoughts on digital currency that's been in the news. Let me ask you about Bitcoin, because that was another famous comment that you made, that it's a fraud. Now we see institutions. Which, which I regret making. The blockchain is real. You can have crypto dollars and yen and stuff like that. ICOs, you got to look at everyone individually. The Bitcoin, it was always to me, is, was what the governments are going to feel about Bitcoin. It gets really big. And I just have a different opinion on the people. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested that much in the subject at all. Well, you can hear more of that interview with Jamie Dimon starts at 6 o'clock Eastern right after our show on Mornings with Maria. Well, two U.S. companies are canceling plans to launch Bitcoin ETFs due to concerns from the Securities and Exchange Commission. According to a filing, SEC staff are raising questions about the liquidity and the valuation of futures contracts. Anthony Chan, chief economist at Chase, joins us now. Anthony, good morning. Morning. What's your reaction to a bit of a change of tone from Jamie Dimon on Bitcoin? Well, I think uh, uh, our chairman and, and CEO speaks for himself. But uh, with regard to, uh, to Bitcoin, uh, we know that the blockchain technology is very exciting. And we also know some of the pitfalls, and that is that it is uh, highly volatile and a lot of fluctuation. I work in the asset management area, and if you tell one of our clients uh, to invest in something that can move 20 or 30 percent in a single day, that certainly would churn a lot of stomachs and make people a little bit nervous. So it's a speculative uh, uh, exercise, but certainly not something that you want to put your hard-earned money that you want to prepare mm -hmm. for retirement if you want to minimize volatility in any way. Even though he told Maria he regrets making those statements, he used words, you know, last year, like Bitcoin is a fraud, it's, it's going to blow up. He's backed off of that. But at the same time, you know, he may end up being on the right side of this argument because you've got two companies now refusing to launch Bitcoin ETFs. Um, and you still have, again, high volatility and concerns about is Bitcoin, is it gold? And, and many analysts are telling their clients right now, stay away. It's too, it's too scary. Well, you probably saw some of that on Monday uh, in, uh, in Asia with South Korea and China talking about increasing oversight or another way of saying that, increasing regulation. And you saw declines of as much as 20 percent in a single day. So, again, that's another sign. And then on Wall Street, you're hearing uh, from some people and certainly in the, in the industry, our Nobel laureate, Joseph Stiglitz, uh, saying that it should be outlawed. And he's won a Nobel Prize in economics. I have a Ph.D. in economics, but not a Nobel Prize, so I respect that view. And even our esteemed uh, chairman of the Federal Reserve, uh, uh, Janet Yellen, has said that it's a highly speculative asset. Mm -hmm. I do want to ask you about the economy overall, Anthony, as that is your wheelhouse. I mean, if you look at what the markets have been doing, how they've been reacting, uh, especially with the incredible gains we had in 2017, we're not off to a bad start. Last night, S&P, Nasdaq hitting two new records. Do you worry that the economy is not going to be able to keep up with the markets at some point this year? Not at all, because the economy is going to grow faster in 2018. I think that a growth rate of something closer to 2.5% uh, in 2018 is possible. That'll be a little bit faster. We know the first quarter is always weak. We've talked about this on your show many times. But the uh, second through fourth quarters are much stronger, averaging about 2.5%. And we know this tax stimulus uh, or tax reform package will add about a half a percent to economic growth. Now, we know the increase in interest rates that the Federal Reserve is engineering will take some of that back, but net-net, mm -hmm. it's a positive. And we'll see what companies start to report when first quarter numbers start to come, or fourth quarter numbers start, start to come out uh, at the end of the first quarter this year when earnings season kicks in. Anthony, thank you very much. Appreciate it. My pleasure.